I've often talked about uh, how much of a pay-per-view buyer I am. Take that any way you want it. But I'll tell you how I take it. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Fastest VPN on the planet. Global server network. All that good stuff. That's great. But a big, big reason why I got NordVPN.com slash Fightful is all the pay-per-views I buy. All the money we're spending. We're trying to control costs as a company, as a household. You can get those UFC pay-per-views at a fraction of the price that you're paying here in America. Plus, you can get all kinds of great content that you wouldn't normally see thanks to those services as well. Shows that are on overseas services, things that you want to watch a little bit early so you get on that UK time and watch them. Being able to change the interfaces of things like the WWE Network, maybe you don't like Peacock, anything like that. NordVPN.com slash Fightful gives you that ability while having the fastest VPN on the planet. Also, you just get so much more out of your internet experience with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Subscribe to, to Fight and AEW Plus. Watch AEW without commercials. Uh, watch Bare Knuckle Boxing. Watch UFC pay-per-views, boxing pay-per-views at the rates they're getting over in the UK. Change your virtual location with just one click. And hey, if you need any help using it, they got that 24-7 tech support. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap. Welcome to Fightful. We're here with a couple of names you know. Hikaleo, who we had j- just a few weeks ago here on Fightful That's in right. El Fantasmo. You're going to be able to see them wrestle Kingdom January 4th. A big rematch. A winner take all tag team title match. You can catch it on New Japan World. Or you can fly your ass over to Japan, too, and watch it there. In the Tokyo Dome, fellas. It's nothing better than the live inside the Tokyo Dome. Nothing better yeah, than that. Yeah, nothing better than that. No, absolutely not. When you it's, get the rumble in the crowd, oh, God. So I, I saw your, your tweet, uh, Phantasmo. You haven't done a lot of media over the last few years, and you're really stepping it up ahead of the Tokyo Dome. Are you just in that spirit, in that mood right now? It's the, uh, it's the holidays, man. We got the... Uh, the big elf pressured me a little bit that we should do some uh, media and talk to you guys and give back to the fans as we don't do that much with the American audience. We're uh, pretty invested with the uh, Japanese audience, but yeah, we've got lots to talk about. Let's go. So, so you guys like had this incredible like 40 minute tag team match just a few weeks ago. How, how are you feeling physically after that? And knowing like you're effectively going to be running that one back at Tokyo Dome. Fucked up. <laughs> I just, yes. I've been to the chiropractor like two or three times since we've been home just to get my neck somewhat sorted out. So, yeah, that's the most yeah. I've been all year. Yeah, to be honest, I'm in more pain than I was uh, after the Super Juniors and the G1 that I did in the same year back to back. Tagli was brutal. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see, but I have like a straw in my nose. I see that. I uh, got my deviated septum fixed that I've been trying to get fixed uh, basically for years. Broken my nose many times in wrestling. And uh, the only available time they had was December 19th. So after the pain of World Tag League, I haven't been to the gym with my neck and shoulder issues. And then uh, came back to Canada and went straight to the hospital. Got my nose all uh, hollowed out. So... Yeah. What kind of recovery time is that? Like, will you even be 100% by the time January 4th rolls around? Uh, definitely not 100%. No, that's uh, not ideal when you're going into the biggest show of the year. But uh, I got the big man to take care of my back. I have uh, I got enough in the tank to go. I remember seeing like a video of Joe Rogan and he had his done and he had to stuff his like full of cotton and all that stuff and had to take some time off the screen. But you're like, out of hell with it. Maybe, maybe it might. I mean, you you stand a chance of maybe getting that thing rebroken. On well, January. that's I had to tell the doctor. I was like, "Yeah, I got the biggest match of my life in front of forty thousand people in two weeks." Just so you know, while uh, you hollow out my skull, so yeah. So this, this time of year, baby. this time of year is always an exciting one for for New Japan. I mean, I know this time last year, Hikaleo, there were there were lots of rumors about you. <laughs> And all that stuff about where where you might go and all that, but completely separate of of the contract season for New Japan that is always around here. You've got uh, Wrestle Kingdom, 
uh, New Year Dash, all that stuff. Is, is there like a different feeling, Hikaleo, when when this time of the year rolls around, even when that show passes, when Wrestle Kingdom passes? Because lots of crazy stuff tends to happen in the month following. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, this is my first time preparing for a main card uh, match. I know EOP was in it a couple times, but for me, this is my first time in the in the main card. Usually I'm in the Rumble. And I let myself go. Like, I'll eat, like, crap for the whole week leading up to it. But now this is the first time where I've had to, like, watch what I'm eating, how I'm training, getting ready for these shows. And then, um, like you said, the months after, we just got our schedule again. It's just you, you have we have maybe, like, a week off before we're at it again, not just for Japan, but for uh, New Japan Strong. We've got that San Jose show, Battle in the Valley, coming up right after – kingdom and then we go right back for new beginnings so we really don't have any time off except for right here um these two weeks one week and a half before kingdom and uh we had talked a little bit about the idea of you two teaming up coming together uh fantastic what was what was your reaction to that to to the idea of that because i mean obviously there's some history there that had preceded you guys teaming up, but it wasn't a pairing that I think a lot of people were expecting to see. Uh, well, to be very honest, I don't think either of us expected it. Uh, literally, like we did the whole G1 uh, where I had no friends, got kicked out of Bullet Club, was a little sad. Uh, the Tongans came and picked me up and took me to Yakiniku and invited me into their family. And uh, we were always just under the assumption that it was going to be ELP and the G.O.D. And then it was literally like a Ria Goku show or something that uh, it was like right before the match. They're like, oh, we're not going to play ELP's music and we're just going to play G.O.D.'s music. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then we uh, got into the ring and they're like, uh, and in the Gorillas of Destiny, El Phantasmo kind of like looked at each other. Like, oh, shit. They just put us in G.O.D. together, and you know, without even telling us. But uh yeah, we have teamed up together back in uh, England and RevPro and stuff, so we do have that chemistry. But uh, yeah, that came a kind of came out of nowhere for both of us. Yeah, and we're two differently. We're two completely different wrestlers. From that was 2019. We we're both at RevPro, so what four years ago? A huge difference from then too. Is El Fantasma invited to the holidays, like the Thanksgivings and, and, and things like that now? Are we going to? Well, of course, man. We've got, I got the Tongan passport ready for him to come on over. <laughs> yeah. You know, we got to get him the tribal tattoo on the side real quick. And then he's he's in. He's already in. Man. He's already in. We're just waiting for that uh, to come over, have some uh, some extra horse ready. I want to see the rope walk with the Tongan death grip. That's what I want to see. I want to see some evolution and some... <laughs> Like like some of that. Like I, I was a fan of the Tongan Death Grip as a kid. Oh, yeah, I wasn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Because one time I asked my dad, I was like, "Does it really hurt?" And then he's like, "Here, let me let me let me give it to you." And then, yeah, it's a shoot, man. It, that he gets you right on this Adam's apple and just squeezes it. I never question him again. So yeah, that's one move that um, I like to use, but I gotta get permission from him first. So one of these days I'll pull it out. Would love to see that. Would love to see that. Now, I, I mean, obviously, your relationship has changed, and uh, just significantly over the last year. But one of my favorite things and I've talked to Hikaleo about this is like the Bullet Club lore, and I, I mean, I think the Gorillas of Destiny have as much claim to being Bullet Club, whatever the hell they want to be, as anybody else, because you know there's some of the guys that, that started it effectively. When you see like the War Dogs and you see Bullet Club Gold and all that. Obviously, Hikaleo's last interactions with guys like Switchblade were categorically different than yours, Phantasmo, because you had said on screen, you know, we weren't going to jump Switchblade, but, you know, things kind of happened there. How are your feelings in regards to the individual offshoots of Bullet Club as they stand now? Because there's a whole lot of them right now. Uh, there is. I love it. There's uh, so many little, like, subgroups. But I think people pay way too much like attention and care about it too much. Like they care that the House of Torture is like in Bullet Club, but like it's basically just branding, you know, like they're not yeah. in Bullet Club, they're doing their own thing. 
uh, you know, I, I like all the different iterations Bullet Club has taken, you know, I thought, uh, we could have done something really cool with me, Kenta and Ishimori kind of going into like a baby face Bullet Club direction. And, uh, that was really close to happening. And I think right at the last minute it didn't and everything, uh, kind of got swept under the rug and, you know, plans changed, but you know, OG I, I, G.O.D. We're the new G.O.D. You know, it's Bullet Club for life, baby. I, I admired last year. I think I talked to Switchblade and I was like, oh, well, you know, the O.C. kind of in. He's like, no, they're in. He's like, Mia Yim's a part of Bullet Club. He's like, it, it, it's a thing. He's like, they can't legally say it, but she is. They've got as much right to say it as anybody else. Do you guys consider Scott Demore still a member of Bullet Club? Just as much as Jeff Jarrett was. Hikaleo. Frankie Kazarian. Yep. I second I second what he says. I'm I'm interested in the the approach to like New Japan's partnerships because we have seen them work everybody wants to work with New Japan. Every company is like, yeah, we want to make that one happen, whether it's MLW, CMLL, TNA, AEW. <laughs> I know that both of you guys have had extensive experiences working as a part of those partnerships. Is there anywhere that you you've looked at Hikaleo and said, you know what? I'd like to see them maybe do some work over there or with them or anything like that. Not only that, we we've seen a huge alliance of like nine Japanese companies come together over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I think all the companies I've wanted them to work with has worked with, um, even WWE, when Carl Anderson came over, that was, you can say that was it's sort insane. of work together. Um, I think more with WWE would be cool. Uh, other than that, I think every, every company we have worked with is, is there. Um, you see, Dude, we have to go back to AEW because he was supposed to be in the forbidden door match. That crazy, uh, young bucks and sting and Darby yeah. and Shingo that match changed like eight or nine times. Like he was supposed to be in it. Uh, and then literally like I was flying to Chicago and then Hiromu got sick. So they had to take Higaleo out of the match, which, you know, we like got to the arena. You're like, that fucking sucks. It's kind of like Tom Waller last year, you know, you get to, uh, oh for Van Dorn, then he couldn't wrestle cause Adam Cole got hurt or whatever. But yeah, I felt real bad for him, but I, I hope that we can go back and do something there. That would be a lot of fun. I mean, I think that's it's it worked out really great too. Because Fantasma, you worked a lot of Impact stuff as well, and I mean, there there were a whole lot of people that that were in our chats on post Impact shows that were like, you know what, I didn't pay that much attention to New Japan, thought it was a different product, and then they saw your work, and they were like, okay, we want to check this out now. So I mean, you guys are exposing new audiences to the New Japan style, and maybe a style that they didn't know was a New Japan style. Like how how are you approached about going over and doing multiple dates like that for for an impact or a TNA? Uh, that's all through Rocky, man. He's the shocker. He's the <laughs> goat. You know that guy does so much work. He should be employed full time, just like by the wrestling business. Like every company should just pool in and pay him money for the amount of work that he does. You know, getting us booked in Impact and doing those fun dates and. Yeah, I had a blast in Impact. Uh, did a lot of those like empty arena dates. So I think I just came in doing my uh, doing my nonsense, high fiving the nobodies and talking shit to the empty chairs. And you know, the I was really happy that I got to pay it off with a Bound for Glory exhibition match because did I remember like two thousand five? I'd go to wrestling pay per view parties and be watching TNA, Bound for Glory and stuff, and you know. To be able to compete at the biggest show of the year for TNA is awesome. And I love that TNA is going back to TNA. I, I do too. I, I think that we're well past like the LOL TNA stuff. I mean, that was like six regimes ago. Uh, and yeah. I think the, 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 I think there's a lot of solid, man. towards that. It's it's a great show. It really is. I really like the uh the production. I don't think gets talked about enough how they have the you know, like high frame rate backstage cameras, it's got a different look to it. It's kind of like shot cinematically sometimes, but you know, they got a you, lot of good guys on the roster too. 
Yeah, you worked with, uh, for that match that you mentioned, Trey Miguel and Steve Macklin. I think Steve Macklin's a guy people don't expect to see in the X Division, but the way that I had put it, it's like if you put Rhino in his prime right in the X Division, he would have fit in, like, in, in his own unique way. And I thought he did that. I thought what you all did was was really great. Like, had you gone in with any real expectations of that lasting all the way up to Bound for Glory? Yeah, no, not at all. It was, uh, like, that was during the COVID thing where, I was in Canada for so long and like going back and forth, I had keep having to do two week quarantines. So I ended up like living at the LA dojo, the new Japan dojo in LA for a while, just so I wouldn't have to keep doing the two week quarantines back and forth. And then uh, that's when Rocky got me into uh, TNA and doing the impact stuff. And then it culminated with bound for glory, which was awesome. But yeah, I mean, when you get guys like Trey and Steve and me, just like putting all our different ideas together. You're like, how can we do the crazy, cool, high flying stuff with Trey? And then how can we have this ass kicker just kick our asses doing crazy shit? And he's like, oh, I do like upside down spears or something. And we're like, oh, Jesus. I, I, oh, yeah, out of the corner. It's incredible. Yeah. And then the Trey was like, oh, I do like the handspring and like spear him through the ropes. I was like, there's no fucking way that's going to happen. And I just remember like sitting in the turnbuckle and like watching it. Like, fly right through the bottom rope like damn yeah that was awesome he's a guy that i could see like working as an agent coach producer for like decades to come like he's very studious about pro wrestling and rocky romero funny enough i had heard this word used to describe only gail kim backstage somebody told me that rocky is unfuck withable and i was like okay that that makes a ton of sense because like one he's very hard to piss off but he holds the key to so many different things being unlocked. Like he holds so much responsibility and he does it seamlessly. Like, you, Oh yeah. You never hear about him being tough to deal with. That's why everybody wants to deal with him. Yeah. He's great. I mean, I don't think we pick on anybody more than we do Rocky. Now that I think about it, like just everyone just busts his balls, but it's because we love him. And, you know, he does so much for this business and, the fact that he gets to go to CMLL and have these like awesome matches with Mascara Dorada and do that whole Mexican thing and then still keep New Japan together, you know, and then gets to go do the AEW paydays is awesome. So, but yeah, we all fuck with little Brown John. He still he still makes time to hang out with the boys too. Like after the show, we'll go get, grab dinner, we'll go grab a drink. And you're just thinking like this man is so busy right now. What's going on in his head? But you just sit down and talk to him. You wouldn't think that too. So man, he's, he knows how to keep, what do you call it? Like the duck, like his, his, uh, feet is in, a row. in the water. But oh. <laughs> what'd you say? Uh, I'll, I'll be at like AEW shows doing media and like, we'll be in the scrum and I'll just hear him like over in the corner and he'd be like, Sean, Sean. I'm like, I didn't even know you were here tonight. You weren't even on the show. And he's he's just there get, getting something done. It's it's fantastic. So I, I mentioned the forty minute match that you guys had a couple weeks ago. We'll start with Hikaleo. Was that the longest match you've had so far? Yep, yep. That was the longest one. I think the second one was just under twenty minutes against Shota during the G one. Uh, so That's that comes quite in. a leap. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You know, when you got someone like ELP tagging with, it's it's good to <laughs> lean on him a little bit. So yeah, I was gonna say someone should do the stats of that forty minutes of how much we actually were in the ring compared to each other. But yeah, uh, yeah that's where we you know we balance each other out. So I mean, when when you've got a, a daun, I don't even know if it's a daunting task. I mean, you guys are wrestling nonstop, but I mean. When you're like, all right, we're getting in there, we're going forty. Is there anything special you do to prepare? Or you you just trust the process and you know you're prepared for that type of thing. Well, that's to be honest, I don't think any of us knew it was going to go 40. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, uh, I think everybody talked about it, but this tag league, it was like 18 shows in 21 days. And then, like, of those off days, they were like eight hour bus rides to Kagoshima or like taking like a Shinkansen to Nagoya. Like, it, like, it was awful. And then the worst part was, it was half that really like, not even half, like 80% of the tour was like house shows, like these like giant empty arenas that are half empty with the house lights on. And, you know, like 
Yeah, it was a grind. And, and I know Goto and Yoshihashi were banged up. We were both banged up. And like a, it was just that exhaustion of that finals really dragged that time out. But, you know, I don't think we could have poured our heart and soul more into that match. Starting with Hikaleo, was it satisfying that the match that, that ended that arduous run that he just mentioned, it was so positively received. Like, everybody loved that match. It was considered, uh, if not the best match uh, of that entire run, uh, than one of them. Did, I mean, was that, like, satisfying? How did that feel for you, knowing that you had been through all of that, you had been through a 40-minute match, and, and it hit with everybody that watched it? Uh, yeah, I think it was just like EOP, how he said it. Everything was just, it led to this, where both teams were just tired, we were just exhausted, and we knew it was the last show, and even when we walked into the arena, it was different from the rest of the arenas we've been to. It was bigger, there was more seats, they had no house show. Ring lights. Lights. Yeah, and so you just, that momentum, that atmosphere just changed instantly, and you were ready to go. And so just to, like I said, pour it all out, that's what we, exactly what we did. And so afterwards, I was more satisfied with each other that we went out there and did our thing. I was satisfied that we weren't seriously injured <clears throat> or banged up or whatnot. But just to put on a great performance like that in front of a great crowd, too. So not so much of listening to what others had to say. It was more of just like an inner satisfaction between us, between the guys in the back and between just New Japan itself. So I was just happy about that. And you guys are, are running it back at the Tokyo Dome. I mean, that that is a tough match to top, like that that one. And I mentioned it went 40 minutes, like so widely positively received. Uh, fantastic. Is this is something where you, you all look at it and you go, well, we got to expect to go 40 again, or is it just a completely different approach because you guys know each other in the ring so much better after spending all that time in the ring together. Yeah, I, you know, I'm more excited for the Tokyo them than I am the finals, obviously. But it's also like the uh, restrictions and restraints. You know, there's kind of the pressure backstage to not go long to kind of like respect the main event. You know, sure. You know, Sonata and Naito are selling tickets. It's not us. You know, we want to. Uh, have a great match but you know it would, it would be taken away from those guys if we went 40 but then that's also exciting to us that you know when we watch our matches back from the Corkin show and then we watch our finals back we can kind of see what tag team moves we hit that worked well and what didn't what counters we can do you know like this might be a a 10 minute sprint it might be a 15 minute technical masterpiece like you don't know what kind of match it is but we're excited to do something different knowing that the first two times we did lock up with Bishamon. They were pretty good. And, you know, this is like the tiebreaker, the third match of the series. And, uh, you know, for us teaming together so recently to go up against those guys who are like the most dominant tag team in wrestling right now, not even just New Japan, but they've been so good for so long that, you know, that's uh, it's, it's going to be fun to go in to Wrestle Kingdom against them. I was just watching Goto and Shibata from like Wrestle Kingdom, fuck eleven or twelve or something like that. Was awesome, man. Goto was so good, like, and then Yoshihashi is not like the goofball that everyone keeps saying that he is. Like mm -hmm. Yoshihashi chops harder than anybody else I've been chopped by. Like he clears Osprey's chops, and like Osprey does like the whole like huge wind up and hits as hard as he can. But, dude, Yoshihashi has, like, fucking bear paws or something that every <laughs> chop he does is is insane. And to that same point, Hikaleo, what's the hardest you've been hit in the ring? You know, Gabe Kidd hits pretty damn hard. He's, um, He's charismatic, when together, dude. When too. we came up together in the L.A. dojo... Shibata was telling each of us to hit as hard as we could, and he carried that over until now. Like even our last meeting at Ryogoku, for some reason, he, I think his forearms just pack a punch, man. Those things always oh. hurt so bad. And so surprisingly, I say him or Fale. 
when we had followed this past <laughs> tag league, homie laid it in. I think, you know, a year off, you, you get kind of rusty and just lay that bitch in. So, yeah, between Gabe, every time we face Gabe, I'm like, shit. Here comes those stupid ass forms. Well, we got a story from uh, when we won the strong tag titles off them. Gabe, uh, like, legit choked me out cold for the first time in my life. <laughs> that like it was a craziest story that he did like the choke on the turnbuckle and like lean back and like i don't remember anything before that and i like i i just like i remember someone like grabbing my balls and i was like what the fuck is going on like like someone's like grabbing my balls and i'm like looking around and it's like really silent and i'm just like looking around this building i was like and i just feel like thousands of people staring at me and i'm like what the fuck is going on like like it felt like a mushroom trip like coming back and regaining consciousness and like in a match and like so what what had happened was gabe choked me out and then coglin like picked me up like in a deadlift uh <laughs> doomsday device so, like that's what like was grabbing my balls i remember like look down at his head like look up and there's gabe kid and he gives me like a uh top rope lariat doomsday device oh, and like, no. i had no if I was dreaming, I had no idea if I was in a match. I was like, one, two, automatically kick out. Like, no idea what's next. Like, they pick me up, hit me with another move. Like, one, two. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I'm in a match right now. It was the most surreal feeling I've ever had in my life. But did that just goes back. Did you get to communicate to them at that point? Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. No, they didn't know. If I didn't know what was the, going on. You look at the video when he's on top of Coughlin's shoulders right here. You see him yeah. just like snap out of it. Like he looks around and he looks and here oh comes Gabe with just a clothesline right there. It's it's funny, but it's scary at the same time because it's exactly well, yeah. how he describes it. He just like snaps out of it and he looks over and there comes Gabe with the line right there. Yeah, like so I like, felt you know, five minutes in real life. But it's like, I don't know if you guys have ever done Magic Mushrooms or LSD or not that I have, but if I would have done it before, that's what it would have felt like, you know, like being in this weird, like surreal real life not real life oh man it was crazy i just remember i came backstage and i was buzzing because i'd never had anything feel like that in my life yeah and it's it's so much different than like a concussion obviously because your brain isn't necessarily hurt but i've seen people like that want to get choked out to see how far they can go in like catch wrestling class and I, i'll never forget one of one of the dudes in class woke up and immediately said i was flying through space we're like, what are you talking about? He's like, I was just flying through space. Yeah, That's where I was. And yeah, I was. For I was buzzing, man. The fact that we also won the titles and had a red hot Rio Goku crowd, like going bananas for God and ELP and stuff, was awesome. But you know, as soon as I got through the back, I went to Jado San. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I didn't know if the match, like, I didn't know if there was any botches. I don't know, like, if anything went wrong. Like, I couldn't remember what happened before. The doomsday device i just remember like waking up but anyways that circles back to gabe just relentlessly choking me out cold in a fucking title match and one of the biggest shows of the year just like how he hits hard he chokes hard i think he's gonna be a big name i, I like i interviewed him a couple years ago and i was blown away at how charismatic the dude was like he it's a very like fight promotion feel with him like he loves to talk that kind of shit that like you'll see at a ufc press conference and i think that translates wow. well the new Japan, but it does come full circle with the, the strong championships because Hikaleo, I've talked to you about this before, but I've not talked to Phantasmo about it. New Japan was effectively forced into a brand split because of the pandemic. And fortunately they had somewhat of an infrastructure already planned, but strong became one of my favorite wrestling shows period, because just this vast array of talent that was featured on there, like they would, like, like I mentioned, Fred Rosser, I did not have him pictured as like completely reinvigorating his career and life in New Japan Strong. And it was just all over the place. And Phantasmo, you, one week you'd be wrestling like Wheeler Yuta or Leo Rush or Alan Angels or any number of these people. Then it'd be like, oh, no, here's Christopher Daniels as well. Like it, you didn't know who was going to show up there. And now I love that it's it's continued with these titles. What was that like for you being sort of I, I forced into that. I know you hopped over there in about, I think, January of 2021, but it was, I, I really enjoyed that show. Yeah, it was a lot of fun just because uh, I was like after COVID. So we got kind of yeah. like, I flew to do the Ring of Honor anniversary show in Vegas. I was going to do a surprise 
uh, appearance to set up a match for Supercard of Honor. And like, that's when COVID all started happening. And I got sent back to Canada and I kind of got like stuck there. I couldn't get back to Japan and I couldn't get to the States. And I know the States has heard running shows. So I was watching all the guys getting to do shows and I was still stuck in Canada, unable to do anything. And the first time I went over was for that Super J Cup taping, which was uh, a lot of fun. Cause that was the whole start of the whole sudden death angle that I did. But, uh, you know, it was just awesome getting to hang out with the boys all day for the whole weekend. Like, it fucking sucked because you had to wrestle like three times a day sometimes mm -hmm. in front of no people. So you don't get that, like, adrenaline spikes that you do in front of the crowds. But, yeah, it, like, from going from no wrestling and nine months wrestling three times a day in the Super J Cup, I was like, oh, my God. But it felt so good to be back and, yeah, you know, would have never have thought I got to do that. BME backrake on Christopher Daniels, you know, that was a, a career highlight for sure. Uh, throughout that, that tag league that we talked about, were there any teams where maybe your chemistry with them surprised you or maybe their in ring surprised you Hikaleo? Cause I mean, I know you, you, it's so many matches in such a short amount of time that like, it, it's hard to plan for a lot of them. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, one that didn't surprise me, but did surprise me how fast they clicked was uh, Monster Sauce, was uh, Lance Archer oh, yeah. and Alex Zane. We already faced them in Vegas a month or two before, but just the fact that they were put together in a such short notice, like us in a way, but they just, you know, they, they were able to team up together and play off each other in a way. I think we learned from them as well because they're both – uh, a giant and uh, one that can move around like Zane and ELP can. But those two definitely, um, they were different than they were in Vegas as well. I felt like our match, I liked our match better here than it was in Vegas also. Um, oh, for sure. Me too. I was really surprised how uh, how many like tag team moves they had. It's like so quick. Thing. It came out of nowhere. Like they didn't have nearly as much as that at Vegas. But then in Japan, it was just, they had a whole new arsenal with them. You know, it was, it was cool to see too. Um, hopefully they stick together. I wouldn't mind facing them again. Cause I'm still learning from Lance Archer. Like I picked his brain every single day um, on the bus in the back. I'm sure he's getting annoyed, but like, even uh, when we go grab dinner at the convening, I'll be like asking him random questions. Cause it's just guys like that. There's not too many big men that you can pick your brain. I can pick my brain, pick their brain from. So having him there, was great um but yeah those two monster sauce was was great he, to have he works such a variety of styles too like mm -hmm. i mean i remember watching him in tna and like that was one of the the appealing things about him was he was doing a lot of things that you know traditional wrestling looked down upon big men doing and he's like wait no i can physically do this so i'm gonna do it type of thing yeah he's doing the rope walks he's doing coast to coast dude like he's He's awesome, man. I love wrestling archery. He gave me the biggest choke slam of my life, too. Just <laughs> effortlessly just put me fucking 10 feet in the air. And oh my God. That was a big ass bump, but yeah. Archer love rules. It. January 4th, Wrestle Kingdom. We got El Fantasmo Hikaleo taking on Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi. I'm a big Goto fan from way back. But listen, I'm pulling for you guys. I'm pulling for you guys. Uh, Cause I'll tell you who hasn't been doing an interview with me, Hiroki Goto. <laughs> you know, I don't think he does very many interviews at all. You know, you know what? Maybe I don't think you would want to interview him either because he fucking speaks barely any English. You'd be surprised. There's some good ones. Like Maki Ito speaks almost no English, but I know I'm going to get good answers out of her. So I'll just submit but the questions ahead of time. She's um, so like, cute look, though. I know. All I got to get is her saying motherfucker a couple times. And I'm like, headline. There we go. We're good. We're, we're set. We're, we're good to go. But you just never know. But, uh, man, I think that you guys have uh, carried the torch of the strong titles really well. I'm, I'm so excited to see this match at Wrestle Kingdom. Winner take all. Hikaleo, El Fantasmo. Anything you want to let the people know before we head out? I know Fantasmo got something to say. I ain't got nothing to say. You got something to say. Nothing to say man. <laughs> ain't got nothing to say. I saw it. You look at you had your eyes twinkle. You say it. I was looking at you. My eyes were twinkling. I was looking at you. 
Why don't you say team break up before the before the match? This is it. This is what how no. it happens. No, we haven't we haven't fought once. Really? Uh -uh. Except for who pays the bills at dinner sometimes. Hey, that's big senpai right here, man. That's the big senpai. So is is that you all fighting amongst each other, being generous, or volunteering one another to pay? No, no, we all fight to see who who will pay the bill. Okay. Especially when Tom is there, we all fight to not let Tom pay the bill, and you know, he always tries to sneak pay it, and you know, we always end up fighting of who will pay the bill. But that's good though, you know. We all respect each other so much. We want to take care of each other. We. I just figured you know, after him hanging out with Carl Anderson so long, he was just conditioned to pay the bill. Like, <laughs> yeah, I miss uh, those boys, good brothers. But uh, yeah, anyways, Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, we got a little preview of the stage and the entrance, and we did the uh, got a little something special for that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. We got the got the new costumes lined up. That'll be cool, and uh, yeah, one hundredth IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions possibly. Or we uh, lose it all and go back to the drawing board and reassess uh, where we stand in this wrestling industry when uh, contracts come up January 31st. Right, big man? Oh. Is that is that a confirmation? I've heard, I've heard conflicting things. I, I don't have anything. I mean, listen, it's contract season. I'm always nagging people. I'm always prodding at people, wanting their contract info. Is that a, is that a, a thing? Yeah, uh, yeah, January thirty first is definitely a thing for some people and their contracts uh, expiring. Specifically, Def you definitely, probably, uh, very maybe, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens at Wrestle Kingdom. I can There's, I can run uh, with definitely, probably, maybe contract up January thirty first as a headline. Um, yeah, Hic we'll see. Hicaleo, we'll see is there any light a... you want to shine on that situation? Yeah, we'll see who's having another uh, loser leaves Japan match around that time. <laughs> there you go, there you go. That I, I got to say, that was one of the most psychotic situations to report around because, flat out, people in WWE were like, you know, we're awfully interested in Hikaleo and Tamatanga and Switchblade, and then those. Obviously, I'm reporting something like that, and you all got a loser leaves Japan match, and I'm like, people are asking me who's going to win it because they're going to WWE. Here we are a year later. I'm like, ain't neither one of them leaving for WWE as of right now. But now things have changed an awful lot. It's a year later. You're in this incredible tag team. Switchblade doing what he's doing. WWE's doing what they're doing. Contract mm -hmm. season is exciting. Dude, the pro wrestling landscape is is the most fun it's ever been since yeah. I've been doing this since 2005. Absolutely. Yeah. Just so many moving parts and you know, people showing up here, showing up there. I saw the uh, Mustafa Ali World oh Tour. God. That's awesome. I uh, would love to have him in Japan. You know, he could have some. Too. You know, he could do uh, junior heavyweight matches and heavyweight matches. You know, he could do yeah. both. That would be awesome. Yeah, as I'd things stand right I, now, I mean, WWE and AEW are probably getting new media money. Uh, Impact is becoming TNA. Uh, MLW just got WWE settlement money by the looks of it. <laughs> so they're going to be spending some money soon. Uh, and the landscape of New Japan could change. There's a lot of contracts that are up. And if contracts are up, that means there's also other money to be spent. So, I mean, I think it's as exciting of a free agent landscape as we have probably seen since maybe AEW started. And there were a lot of people getting signed up there and moving parts. So it's it's always exciting to me that the free agent landscape. Yeah, I just hope New Japan is up. Uh, I hope New Japan is just putting some money into this New Japan World app. God damn it. <laughs> well, that's where you can watch Wrestle Kingdom on January 4th. These two fellas competing in a winner-take-all tag team title match. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Hikaleo, good to see you again. Phantasma, hopefully we do this again in the future. All right, thank yes, you. brother. I had fun. Thanks for having us on. Until next time, guys. We're out.